Majesty, the King Berenger the First. Long live the King. Her Majesty, Queen Margaret, first wife to the King, followed by Juliet, domestic help and registered nurse to their Majesty. Long live the Queen. Her Majesty, Queen Marie, second wife to the King, but first in affection, followed by Juliet, domestic help and registered nurse to their Majesty. Long live the Queen. His notability, doctor to the King, gentleman court surgeon, bacteriologist, executioner, and astrologist. Start up. Central heating. Start up. Nothing's doing. Mm. The radiator is stone cold. Oh, it's not my fault. He never told me he took away my job to speak fire later. You know, not officially. Long live the queen! There's a lot of dust about, and cigarette ends on the floor. It just come from milking a cow, your majesty. She's almost out of milk. I haven't had time to do the sitting room. This is not the sitting room, it's the throne room. How often do I have to tell you? All right. The throne room, as your majesty wishes. I haven't had time to do the sitting room. It's cold. I've been trying to turn heat on, your majesty. Can't get the system to function. The radiator is on. Won't cooperate. The sky is overcast with clouds. They don't seem to want to break up. The sun is late. And yet I heard the king ordered him to come out. It says so. The sun is already deaf to his commands. I heard a little rumble during the night. There's a crack in the wall. Oh, really? Things are moving fast. I wasn't expecting this so soon. Juliet and I tried to patch it up. Uh, you woke me up in the middle of the night. Uh, now it's there again. Should we have another go? There's no point. We can't turn the clock back. Where's Queen Marie? She must still be dressing. Mm, naturally. 
caught. Yes, I have. It's Beatty. You're inhuman. He's unprepared. It's your fault if he isn't. He's been like one of those travelers who linger at every inn, forgetting each time that the inn is not the end of the journey. When I reminded you that in life we must never forget our ultimate fate, you told me I was a pompous blue stocking. It is pompous, too. What are you goggling at? You're not going to break down, too, I hope. You can leave us.
snow is falling on the North Pole of the sun. The Milky Way seems to be curdling. The comet is exhausted, feeling its age, winding its tail around itself like a dying dog. You're exaggerating. Yes, you must be exaggerating. Do you wish to look through the telescope? hours and 38 minutes ago. Now it's November. Outside our frontier walls, the grass is shooting up. The trees are turning green. The cows are calving twice a day, once in the morning and again around five or a quarter past. Yet in our country, the bitter, bitter leaves are peeling off of the trees. The trees are sighing and dying, and the earth is quaking rather more than usual. <laughs> Tears retreating, cattle bellowing, sirens screaming. There's far too much noise. I must look into it. We'll see what we can do. Ouch, my lips. Good morning, doctor. Is it embargo? I'm expecting an engineer from abroad. Ours are no good nowadays. They just don't care. Besides, we haven't have any. <laughs> Why did we close the polytechnic? Oh yes, it fell through a hole in the ground. And why built another when they all disappear? Mm. <laughs> uh, I have a headache. Clouds! I thought I banished clouds. Clouds! We've had enough rain. Enough, I said. Enough rain. Ooh, there's an idiotic cloud. Like an old man. got rings around your eyes. Have you been crying? Oh, God. Ugh. I won't have anyone upset her. And why did she say, oh, God, like that? It's an expression. Go and get rid of the cobwebs. Yeah, those cobwebs. Disgusting. Hurry up. Don't dawdle. Have you forgotten how to use a broom? Mine's all worn out. I need a new one. I could really do with 12 brooms. What are you all staring at me for? Is there something abnormal about me? It's so normal to be abnormal, there is no such thing as abnormality. <laughs> so that's straightened out. Uh, my dear King, you're limping. Limping? I'm not limping. Oh, yes, I am 
even support her without my consent. I'm in perfectly good health. Uh, you're teasing me. <laughs> it's, it's lies. You've always wanted me dead. She's always wanted me dead. I'll die, all right? I'm the king. I'm the one to decide. You've lost the power to decide for yourself, Your Majesty. And even now, you can't help falling ill. I am not ill. Did you just say just now I wasn't ill? I'm still handsome. And those pains of yours. All gone. Oh, move about a bit. Ah! Ah! That's because I wasn't mentally prepared. You didn't give me enough time to think. I think and I'm cured. A king can cure himself. But I've been too engrossed ruling my kingdom. Your kingdom? What a state that's in. Really, you can't govern it now. You know you can't. But you won't admit it. You've lost your power now over yourself and over the elements. You can't stop the rot. And you've no more power over us. You'll always have power over me. Not even you. It's too late to fish out the ministers now. <laughs> the stream they fell into with all its banks and willows has vanished into a bottomless pit. I do see. It's a plot. You want me to abdicate? Yes. A voluntary abdication, that would be best. Yes, sire, abdicate, that would be best. Abdicate? Me? Yes, <laughs> abdicate governmentally. And morally. And physically. Don't listen to them. Don't give your consent. <laughs> They're mad. Oh, that's the traitors. Traitors! Yeah! Sire, sire, my poor lord, not sire. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Guard, arrest them. Guard, arrest them. Locked him up in the tower. Uh, no, the tower's collapsed. Uh, locked him up in the cellar or the rabbit hutch. Arrest them, all of them. Arrest in them! Order. In the name of his majesty, I, I arrest you. Get a move on then. It seems he's the one who's arrested. Guard, do it. Do it then. You see, he can't move. He's got gout and rheumatism. Sire, the army is paralyzed. An unknown virus has crept into his brain to sabotage his strong points. Your Majesty, you can see for yourself it's your own orders that paralyze him. Don't listen to her. It's a question of willpower. She's trying to hypnotize you. <laughs> I... You. In the name of the king, I... You. What's come over you? Speak. Advance. Do you think you're playing statues? It's a characteristic symptom. <laughs> Medically quite classic. Huh. Yeah. Prove that you still have power. You can if you want to. <laughs> I will prove it. Stand up first. I stand up. Oh. <laughs> you see how easy that was? You see, both of you are easy it is. You pair of humbugs. Bolsheviks, conspirators. No, no, alone, I can't manage. No, no, I can't manage by myself. Long live the king! The king is dying! Long live the king! Long live the king! Oh, that's a bad woman. Don't believe it. 
Oh, oh that's another bad omen. Don't believe it. Clench it tightly in your fist. Hold it firmly. Long live. Long live. Your Majesty. We must keep that woman quiet. She oh. says whatever comes into her mind. She's not to speak without our permission. <coughs> now. <coughs> Try and make him understand. Your Majesty, several decades, or even three days ago, your kingdom was flourishing. In the last three days, you've lost every war you've won. And those you've lost, you've lost again. And consider, the missiles you'd like to fire don't even get off the ground, or else they launch off and drop back to Earth with a thud. A technical hitch. There weren't any in the past. Your triumphs are over. You've got to realize that. Your pains are stiff. I never had them before. This is the first time. Exactly. That's the sign. That's the symptom. It's all really happened at once, hasn't it? You should have expected it. It's all really happened at once, and you're no longer your own master. Try and have the courage to look facts in the face. Just try. I picked myself up. You're a very sick man, and you could never make that effort again. Of course not. It won't be long now. What can you still do? Can you give an order that's obeyed? I'll prove to you what I can do. Guard, come here. He can't move. He can only obey other people now. Guard, two paces forward. Guard, two paces back. Off with that guard's head! Off with his head! Ooh, he said it's toppling! It's going to fall! It wobbles a bit. That's all. Off with the doctor's head! Off with his head at once! The doctor has a sound head on his shoulders. He's got it screwed on all right. I'm sorry, Cyrus. You see, I feel quite ashamed. <laughs> off with Marguerite's crown! Knock it off! Imagine I'm going to let things go on like this. There must be a rust on the machines. That stops the wheels from turning. You can speak now. We give you permission. Uh, tell me to do something and I'll do it. Command me, sire. Command me. I'll obey you. <laughs> she thinks what she calls love can achieve the impossible. Sentimental superstition. We've passed that stage already. Mm. Order me, my king. Order me, my love. See how beautiful I am. Smell my perfume. Order me to come to you. To kiss you. Oh, come to me. Kiss me. Can you hear me? Why, yes, I can. I'll do it. Do it, then. Do it. I can't. A dance, then. Or uh, turn your head. I order bugles to sound, bells to ring, 
a salute from 121 guns in my honor. Huh. Wait, yes, I can hear something. It's only the ringing in your ears, Your Majesty. Don't try anymore. You're making a fool of yourself. You're, you're getting very tired, my dear little king. Don't despair. You're soaked in perspiration. Rest a little. After a while, we can try again. Wait an hour, and then we'll manage it. Oh. In one hour and 25 minutes, you're going to die. Yes, sire. In one hour, 24 minutes, and 50 seconds. Oh, Marie. Marie. In one hour and 24 minutes and 41 seconds, prepare yourself. Don't give in. Stop trying to distract him. You can't hold him back. The official program must be followed stage by stage. The ceremony is about to commence. I was 
such good health. I was so young. You kept putting it off. At 20, you said you'd wait till your 40th year before you went into training at 40. I was in such good health. At 40, you wanted to first reach your 50s. At 50, why not reach your 60s? And so you went on and on from 60 to 90 to 125 to 200 to 400 years old. Instead of putting it off for 10 years at a time, you put it off for 50, and then you postponed it from century to century. I, I was just about to start. If only I could have one more century before me. All you have now is one hour, Sire. Oh. You must do it all in an hour. He'll never have enough time. It's impossible. He yeah. must be given more! That is impossible, but an hour gives him all the time he needs. A well-spent hour is better than whole centuries of neglect and failure. Five minutes are enough. Ten fully conscious seconds. We're giving him an hour. Sixty minutes, 3,600 seconds. He's in luck. He's lingered too long by the wayside. Your oh, Majesty, my poor Majesty's been playing truant. Oh, I'm like a schoolboy who hasn't done his homework. Sitting for an exam. What stage am I in? The king has just alluded to his state. A state of ignorance. He'd like to go on playing truant for centuries to come. I'd like to reset my exam. No, resets are allowed. You'll take them now. There's nothing you can do, your majesty. Neither can we. We only practice medical science. We can't perform miracles. Did you tell the people? Have you warned them? Ah, I want everyone to know that the king is going to die. My good people, your king is going to die! Ah! Ah! Your king is going to die! It's off the king! I want the whole world to know that the king is going to die! Scandalous! My good people, I've got to die! But, but the king is now a king! Oh, he's the man! Your majesty, think of the death of Louis XIV, of King Charles III, or King James, who slept in his own coffin for 20 years before his death. It is your majesty's duty to die with dignity. With dignity? Help! Your king is going to die! <laughs> Ah. 
I won't wear that. It's like a crown, but not so heavy. Let me keep my scepter. You've no longer the strength to hold it. It's no good, good use trying to lean on it now. <laughs> we'll take care of you. We'll wheel you around in that chair. I, I want to keep it. Let him have his scepter. <laughs> he wants it. Very well, I don't see why not. Uh, perhaps it's not true. Tell me it's not true. Perhaps it's a nightmare. How? Perhaps there is a ten to one chance, one chance in a thousand. I often used to win the sweepstakes. Your Majesty. I won't hear any more of your talk. Your words scare me. You must listen, sire. I can't listen to you anymore. I'm too frightened. And don't you come any nearer either. I'm scared with your pity. <gasps> He's like a small child, a little boy again. An ugly little boy with wrinkles. You uh, try to put yourself in his place. Oh, speak to me. I didn't mean it. Speak to me. Help me up. Stand by me. I want to run away. <sighs> oh my god, his legs can hardly carry him. Oh, my arms hurt too. Does that mean he's starting? Why was I born if it wasn't meant forever? Damn my parents. What a joke. What a farce. I came into the world uh, five minutes ago. I, I came into the throne two minutes ago. 283 years ago. I got married two and a half minutes ago. 277 years and three months. I never had time to smell the roses. You never even tried. And yet you had the greatest experts to tell you all about it. Theologians, people of experience, books you never read. I never had the time. You used to say you had all the time in the world. I never had the time. I, I never had the time. I never had the time. He's going back to that again. I'd say things were looking up. He's protesting, complaining. However much he moans and groans, he's starting to reason things out. That means he's begun to resign himself. I shall never resign myself. As he says he won't, it's a sign he will. He's posing the problem, raising the question. At last! Your Majesty, you have made war 180 times. You have gone into battle over a thousand times. First, on the back of a horse with a red and white plume. Then, when you modernized the army, you would stand on the top of a tank or on the wing of a fire plane. You never knew fear. He was a hero. You have come near death a thousand times. Near it. I knew it wasn't for me. You were a hero. Remember that. Aided <laughs> and abetted by this doctor, this executioner here, you oh. ordered the assassination! Execution, not assassination! Execution, your majesty, not assassination! <laughs> I was a mere instrument. I was only following orders. I was an executor, not an executioner. It was all you said. It was an agent to me. Anyways, I'm sorry. I tell you, you butchered my parents, your brothers, your rivals, our cousins, and great grand cousins, and all their family, friends, and town. You massacred the lot and scorched their land. The Majesty used to say they would die someday, anyways. That was for reasons of state. You're dying too because of your state. But I am the state. The state the poor man's in. Gone. 
When I've gone to Latin, stop himself silly and dance on my tomb. And I said, oh, my dear sister, please make them remember me. Make them learn my life by heart. Let the school children and scholars study nothing else but me, King Dumb and my exploits. Destroy all the like, all these little statues. It's not mine in all the public squares. My portrait in every ministry. My photograph in every office and every town hall. Let every car, push car, steam plane, and flying ship be named after me. Make them forget all their captains, kings, poets, and philosophers, and fill every conscious mind with memories of me. Let them read by spelling out my name, B, E, or Barringer. Let my likeness be on all the icons, me on the millions of crucifixes in all of our churches. Let them make mass for me, let me be the host. Let the windows light up in the shape and color of my eyes, and the river trace my profiles on the blade. Let them cry out my name throughout eternity and beg me and implore me. Perhaps you'll come back again. Oh, perhaps I will come back again. Let them preserve my body on some palace, on a throne. And let food be put before me. Let musicians play and virgins gravel at my ice cold feet. He's raving. His Majesty the King is delirious. Not yet. There's too much sense in what he says. Too much and not enough. If such be a role, Your Majesty, we will embalm your body and preserve it. As long as we can. No! No embalming. I don't want to be burnt. You're not to bury me or throw me out to the vultures. I want to feel arms around me. Warm arms. Soft arms. Cool arms. Strong arms. He's not too sure what he does want. We'll make up his mind for him. <sighs> If I am remembered, let them remember me to the end of time. No, beyond the end of time. In 20,000 years. In 255,000 million years! Oh, they'll forget long before that. Selfish lot of them. They only think of their own little lives, not of mine. If the whole earth is going to explode, explode it will. It's all the same way. Tomorrow and or in countless centuries to come. What's got to finish one day is finished now. Everything is yesterday. Even today will be yesterday. All things pass into the past. My darling king, there is no past. There is no future. Remember, there is only a present that goes right on to the end. Everything is present. Be present. Be the present. Alas, I'm only present in the past. Right, Berenger, try and get things straight. Yes, my king. Get things straight, my love. Stop torturing yourself. Remember, I implore you to remember that morning in June we spent together by the sea. When happiness raced through you and inflamed you, you knew then what joy meant. You felt it. Rich, changeless, and undying love. You found that fiery radiance within you. Have you found it once? It is still there now. Look for that radiance again. Find it within yourself. I, I don't understand. You don't understand yourself anymore. He never did understand himself. <sighs> Pull yourself together, I implore you! How do I manage that? Oh, no one can or will help me, and I can't help myself. Oh, oh help me, son. Son. Tiss away these shadows and hold back the night. Sun, light up every tomb and shine into every corner, nook and cranny. Creep deep inside of me. Ah, my feet is turning cold. Ah! Sun, will you miss me? Good little sun, protect me. And if you need of some small sacrifice, parch and wither up the world, and let every human creature die, provided I could live forever, even in some limitless desert. I'll come to terms with solitude. I'll keep alive the memories of others. I'll miss them quite sincerely. It's better to miss one's friend than to miss oneself. Oh, oh, son, son, let me go on living century after century, even with some raging toothache. Ah. But, I, but I fear what must end one day is it has ended now. Well, sir, what are you waiting for? It's only his speeches that are never ending. Uh, and these two weepy women nearly push him deeper into the mire, bind, then trap, and hold him up. There's not enough whipping. Don't 
stop the weeping. They'll stop the weeping for their kings, their young king, their old king, their poor little king. I feel pity when I think how much they'll miss me to never see me again. I'm the one who thinks about others. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm trying to express it to you. I'm dying. But I can't express it unless I talk like a book and make literature of it. And that's the way it goes on until the bitter end. As long as we live, we turn everything to literature. If only it could console him. The king finds some consolation in literature. No. No. <laughs> Nothing can console me now. <laughs> It just wells up inside of me and drains away again. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Help me, you countless thousands. Teach me how you manage to accept death. Teach me. Let me lean on you like crutches. Help me cross the threshold that you have crossed. Come back from the other side and help me. And you who were frightened did not want to go. What was it like? Who dragged you there? Who helped you? Who pushed you? <laughs> and you, who were strong and courageous, who, who accepted death with indifference and serenity. Teach me your indifference and serenity. Uh, teach me resignation. You statues, you dark or shining phantoms, ancients and shades. Teach him serenity. Teach him indifference. Teach him resignation. Make him see reason and set his mind at rest. You suicides! Teach me. Teach me lassitude. What drug must I take for that? I can prescribe him you four pills or tranquilizers. You vomit them up. You remembrances. You pictures of days gone by. Which no longer exist but in our memories of memories. Recollections of recollections. You've got to learn to let go and surrender completely. We invoke you. You morning mists and dews. You evening smoke and clouds. You saints, you wise and foolish virgins, help him, for I cannot. You who died happy, who looked death in the face, who remained conscious of your very end, help me. Help him. Help him. All of you. Help him. You who died blissfully, what face did you see close to yours? What was the last rays of light that brushed your face? What smile did you see that gave you ease that made you smile? Help him, you thousand millions of the dead. Oh, you great nothing. Help the king. <laughs> I am the dying agony of all. So many worlds will flicker out of me. Life is exiled. But I like being in exile. Control your majesty, you will return to your own country. You will go back to where you came from before you were born. Don't be so frightened. You're sure to find something familiar there. When faced with death, even a tiny egg can put up a fight. It's not natural to die because no one ever wants to. I want to exist. That's all he knows. He wants to exist forever. Doctor, doctor, am I in the throes of death? No, you've made a mistake. <laughs> not yet, not yet. He hasn't started yet. I can hear, I can see. Those are walls, those are, are furnitures, and, and, and I have air to breathe. <laughs> I can think, I can hear. A fin fair! Uh, the king is walking. <laughs> Long live the king!
the last convulsion but one. I, I can still stay up. But you're out of breath. Oh, you're tired. Sit anyway. You can stand again later. Mm, don't lie to him. That doesn't help. I used to like Mozart. I'll never hear his music again. You'll forget all about it. Did you mend my trousers? Or did you think it's not worth the trouble now? Have you had my, my purple cloak that had a hole in it? Have you had my shoes resold? I never gave it another thought. You never gave it another thought? Tell me, what do you think about? What does your husband do? I'm a widow. Oh, uh, uh, what do you think about when you do the housework? Nothing, Your Majesty. Oh. What's your family? Where do you come from? You never took any interest before. And you're not really interested now. He wants to gain time. Tell me, what sorts of life did you lead? A bad life, sire. Life can never be bad. That's a contradiction in terms. Life is not very beautiful. Life is life! When I get up in the winter, it's still dark, and I'm as cold as ice. Ooh, you don't like the cold? When I get up in the summer, it's only just beginning to get light. A pale sort of light. A pale light. There are all sorts of lights. A blue and pink, white and green, and pale. I do all the palace laundry in the wash house. It hurts my hands and cracks my skin. It hurts. You can still feel your skin. Haven't they bought you a washing machine? Marguerite, a palace and no washing machine? We have to pawn it to raise a state loan. Aha! Uh -huh. I empty the chamber pots, I make the beds. Ooh, she makes the beds! Where we all hide down and go to sleep and wake up again. To wake up every day, every morning, one comes into this world. I polish the parquet floors and sweep and sweep and sweep. There's no end to it. There's no end to it! It gives me the backache. Ooh, that's right. She has a back. We've all got backs. And pains in the kidneys. And kidneys, too. And now, we've no doctors left. So I dig, and I rake, and I sew. And things grow. I get quite worn out. Well, you ought to have told me. I did tell you. Oh, maybe. Such a lot has escaped my notice. <laughs> There's no window in my room. Who no window. So then you go out for such a light, huh? and then you find it, and then it makes you smile. <laughs> Where do you live? In the attic. Oh, to come down in the morning, you first take the stairs, you go down a step, but down another, down another, you take another step, down another, and when you get dressed, you put first your stocking. Down a heel. In a dress. It's amazing. A cheap one. A rotten old thing. A rotten old dress. You don't know what you're saying. Once? I had an abscess in my mouth and they removed one of my teeth. Oh, hey, that's terrible. You're in terrible pain. But it starts to ease off and then disappear. It's a tremendous relief that makes you feel wonderfully happy. I feel tired. So then you take a rest, that's so good. There's not enough time off for that. Well, you can still hope you'll have enough time. So then you go out and do the shopping with your basket. And then you say, good day, to the brochure. <laughs> He's enormous, hideously fat, so ugly he frightens the birds and the cats away. Marvelous! So then you take out your purse, you pay, and then you get your change. The markets are medley of uh, uh, green lettuce, uh, uh, red cherries, golden grapes, uh, purple eggplants, <laughs> all, all, all this, all of the color of the rainbow. All this is magical, like a fairy tale. It's incredible. And then I go home the same way I came. Ooh, so you take the same road twice a day with the sky above you. You can gaze at it twice and then breathe its air. Ooh, you never realize that you're breathing. Think about it. It's a miracle. <laughs> and then, then I have to do the washing up from the night before. Plates covered in sticky fat. And then I have to do the cooking. Ooh, sublime. You're wrong. Boring. It makes me sick. Well, some people one will never understand. It's wonderful to feel bored and to not feel bored too. To lose one temp to lose one's temper and to keep
keep one's temper, to practice resignations, and to insist on your rights. You get excited. <laughs> you talk to people, and people talk to you. It's, it's incredible. It's amazing. Like some endless celebration. You're right there. There's no end to it. After that, I have to wait at table. You wait at table. You wait at table. What do you serve at table? A meal I've just prepared. What, for example? No, still. Still! It's a meal in itself. I used to be so fond of stew with vegetables and cabbage and carrots uh, mixed with butter and, and, and crushed with a fork and mashed together. We could bring him some. Yes, go send for some stew. You know, what if he likes it? Bad for his health. He's on a diet. I, I want some stew. It's not what the doctor orders for a dying man. But if it's his last wish, he must detach himself. Oh, gravy. My potatoes and carrots could lead me by the nose. He's still <laughs> making jokes. I've, it never struck to me how beautiful carrots are. <laughs> Quick! Go kill the two spiders in my bedroom. I, I don't want them to survive me. No! Don't kill them. Perhaps in them, there is still something of me. Ah, uh, yeah. That stew is dead. There was never such thing as stew. Stew has been banished from the length and the breadth of the land. At last, something's achieved. At least he's given that up of all the things we crave for. The minor ones go first. Now we can begin gently as you remove the dressing from an open sore, first lifting the corners as they're furthest from the center of the wound. Juliet, wipe the sweat from his face. He's dripping wet. No, not you. It's panic oozing out of his pores. You see, his temperature's gone down, though. There's not much sign of goose flesh. His hair was standing on end. Now it's lying flat. He's not used to being so terrified yet, oh no. But now he can see the fear inside himself. That's why he's daring to close his eyes. He still looks tense, but see how the wrinkles of old age settle on his face? Already he's begun to let things take their course. He'll still have a few setbacks. It's not that easy. But without the wind-up, that would have been too degrading. <laughs> He'll still be subject to fright, but your fright, without abdominal complications. We can't hope his death will be an example, but it will be fairly respectable. His death will kill him now, not his fear. He'll still need a lot of help, all the same, your majesty. A lot of help until the very last second, until he's drawn his very last breath. I'll help him. I'll drive it out of him. I'll cut him loose. I'll untie every knot and ravel up the tangled skein. I'll separate the wheat from the tenacious tears that cling to him and bind him. It won't be easy. Until death comes, you are here. And when death is here, you will have gone. You won't meet her or see her. The lies of life, those old fallacies, death has always been here present in the seed since the very first day. Neither your charm nor your charms can bewitch the king anymore. The charm of Queen Marie no longer casts its spell over the king. You used to love me. You love me still as I have always loved you. But for some reason, that doesn't seem to help. Love is a madness. Uh, love is a madness, and when you're mad with love, when you love blindly and completely, death will steal away. If you love me, if you love everything, love will consume your fear. The whole universe is one. Everything lives again, and the cup that was strained is full. I'm full. I'm full, all right? Full of holes. It makes me dizzy. I'm coming to an end. There is no end. Others will love in your place and gaze at the sky for you. I'm dying. <sighs> Younger generations gonna expand the universe. I'm dying. Conquering new constellations. I'm dying. Boldly battering at the gates of heaven. They can knock them off for that all I care. You were a pioneer, a god, a harbinger of new developments. You count, and you will be counted. You are inscribed forever in the annals of the universe. And who is going to look up the archives? 
I die. So let, let everything die with me. No. Let everything stay as it is. No. If my death won't resound through worlds without end, let everything die. No. Let everything remain. His Majesty wants the remains to remain. No. Let it all die. His Majesty wants it all to die. Let it all die. Let it all survive. Let it all stay as it is. No. Let it all die. Stay. Die. Stay. Die. Stay. He doesn't know what he wants. Well, I don't think he knows what he wants anymore. He doesn't know what he wants anymore. He's gone senile. Gaga. His Majesty the King has gone Gaga. Be quiet. We want no more doctor's bulletins given to the press. Doctor's bulletins suspended by order of her Queen Margaret. My king, my little king, come. When I had nightmares and, and cry out in my sleep, you'd come, you'd wake me up and kiss me and smooth away my fears. But you can't do that now. Uh, out. When I had sleepless night, and wandered out of my bedroom. You'd wake up too in your pink flowered dressing gown. You'd come and find me in the throne room and take me by the hand and lead me back to bed. It was just the same with my husband. I used to share my colds and the flu with well, you. Well, you catch colds now. Uh, what? We used to think the exact same thing at the exact same time. You'd finish a sentence just started in my head. You used to choose my ties for me, and, and though I didn't always like the choice, we used to fight about that. Storming a teacup. How very suburban. We'll have to keep that out of the chronicles. You used to dust my crowns and polish the pearls to make them shine. <laughs> Do you love me? Do you love me? I have always loved you. Do you still love me? He does still love me. Do you love me today? Do you love me this minute? Here I am, here, look, look, please look at me. I've always loved myself. At least I can still see myself, feel myself, contemplate myself. He's running late. He's turned back in his tracks. It's not serious. Don't worry, doctor. Executioner. You know, these little know. tricks, these kicks against the pricks, they're all to be expected, all part of the program. You know, we wouldn't have had this trouble if it was a good old heart attack. Heart attacks are reserved for businessmen. Or even double pneumonia. That's for the poor, not for kings. I could decide not to die. You see, he's not cured yet. I could decide to stop wanting things and decide not to decide. We would decide for you. The queen and the doctor will now make decisions for his majesty the king. It is our duty. It was his majesty, my commander in chief, who set the tanks on fire. It was he who invented gunpowder and stole fire from the gods. He nearly blew the whole place up. But he caught the pieces, and he tied them together again with string. I helped it. But it wasn't so easy. It wasn't so easy either. He was the one who fitted up the first forges on Earth. He discovered the way to make steel. He used to work hours a day, and he made us work even harder. He was our chief engineer. And as an engineer, he made the first balloon, and then the zeppelin, and then finally, with his own hands, he built the first airplane. At the start, it, it wasn't a success. You know, the first test pilots, Icarus, all the rest, they all fell into the sea. 
until eventually he piloted the plane himself. I was his mechanic, and long before that, when he was only a little boy, he invented the wheelbarrow. You know, I, I, uh, I used to play with him. And then uh, railways, automobiles, and airways. He invented the, the sickle and the plow. He drew up plans for the Eiffel Tower, not to mention his designs for the harvesters the, and, and the tractors. Tractors! Good heavens, yes. I'd forgotten. He extinguished volcanoes, and he caused new ones to erupt. He built New York, Moscow, Rome, Geneva. He founded Paris. He created revolutions and counter-revolutions. Reform, religion, counter-reform. You wouldn't think so to look at him. He put the Iliad and the Odyssey. What's an automobile? It runs along by itself. Oh, yes, yeah. He wrote great comedies and tragedies under the name William Shakespeare. Oh, so that's who Shakespeare was. You ought to have told us ages ago. It was a secret. Oh, he invented the telephone and the telegraph. And he fixed them up himself. <laughs> yes, he did everything with his own hands. He was never any good with his hands. At the slightest sign of a leak, he'd call a plumber. Well, my commander in chief was a very handy man. Now he can't even get his shoes on or off. Not so long ago, he managed to split the atom. Now he can't even turn a light off or on. Master, commander in chief, managing director, my majesty. We know all about his earlier exploits. We don't need an inventory. Oh, what's a horse? Oh, there is a walls. Oh. There are furnitures. This is a floor. I've done such things. What else did they say I did? What else? I, I can't remember. I, I forgot. Oh, and that's a throne. Do you remember me? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I exist. He doesn't even remember what horse is. I remember a little ginger cat. <gasps> he remembers a cat. I used to have a little ginger cat. We called him our wandering Jew. I found him in a field, stole him from his mother, a real wild cat. He was two weeks old, but he knew how to scratch and bite. I fed him and petted him and took him home, and he grew into the gentlest of cats. Once, madame, he crept into the coat sleeve of a lady visitor. <laughs> he was beautifully mannered, like a prince. When he came home in the middle of the night, he used to come greet us with his eyes full of sleep, and then he'd stumble off back to his box. He, in the morning, he used to come wake us up by crawling into our bed. He was scared stiff of a vacuum cleaner. A bit of a coward, really, that cat. A poet, defenseless, a poet cat. I tried to introduce him to the outside world. I put him down on the pavement near our window. He was terrified. Afraid of the pigeons that hopped all around him. And there he was, pressed against the walls, crying in and meowing to me in desperation. To him, other animals and cats were strange creatures that he mistrusted or enemies he feared. He only felt at home with us. We were his family. <laughs> he thought we were cats and cats were something else. And yet, one fine day, he must have felt the urge to go out on his own. The neighbor's big dog killed him. And there he was, like a toy cat, a twitching marionette, with one eye gone and a paw torn off. Yes, like a doll, destroyed by a sadistic child. I told you you shouldn't have left the door open. How I hated that sentimental, timorous beast. He was good. Beautiful and wise, all the virtues. He loved me. 
My one and only cat. I repeat, he's running late. I used to dream about him that he was laying in on the grate of the glowing embers. <laughs> and Maureen was surprised that he didn't get burnt. I told her, cats can't burn, they're fireproof. He came out meowing out of the fireplace in a cloud of thick smoke. But it wasn't him anymore. What a transformation. It was a different cat, fat and ugly, an enormous she-cat like his mother, the wild cat, a bit like Marguerite. by enemies, and it's all his fault. He never cared about his successors. He never thought about what came after him. After him, the deluge. Worse than the deluge, after him, there's nothing. Selfish Bono. Then march with me, you Nisi Bono. He was king of a great kingdom. He owned it. Its royal residence. A kingdom. So wide, you couldn't even begin to glimpse its boundaries. Boundless in space, but bounded in time. At once infinite and ephemeral. He was its prince, its first gentleman. He was its father and son. He was crowned king at the very moment of his birth. He and his kingdom grew up together. And vanished together. The very day he was born, he created the sun. And that wasn't enough. He had to have fire made, too. And there were wide open spaces, and the stars, and the sky, and there were oceans, and mountains, and there were cities, and plains, and people, and faces, and buildings, and rooms, and beds, and the light, and the night, and there were wars, and there was peace. And a throne. And his fingers, the way he looked, and the way he breathed. He's still breathing now. He's still breathing because I'm here. Is he still breathing? Yes, Your Majesty, he's still breathing because we're here. Yes, yes, no doubt about it, he's still breathing. His kidneys have stopped functioning, but the blood's still circulating, going round and round. His heart is sound. It'll have to start soon. What's the good of a heart that has no reason to beat? Exactly. His heart's gone berserk, do you hear? There it is, going off as fast as it can. And it slows down. Then it's off again as fast as it can go. Oh, good God, everything's falling to pieces! A mad heart, a mad man's heart! Oh, it's infectious, I don't want to catch it. Oh, be quiet in a moment! Uh, we all the symptoms, it's always like this when the universe snaps out. It proves his universe is not unique! That never entered his head! He's forgetting me. At this very moment, he's forgetting me. I can feel it, he's leaving me behind. I can't go on living if I don't exist in his distracted heart. Hold tight, hold firm, clench your fist with all your strength. It's I who keeps you alive. I keep you alive. You keep me alive. If you forget me, if you abandon me, I no longer exist. I am nothing. He will be a page in a book of 10,000 pages in one of a million libraries with a million books. It won't be easy to find that page again. He's clenching his fists. He's Hanging on, he's resisting, he's coming back to consciousness. Hold me as I hold you. Look at me as I look at you. I can hear. I can see. Who are you? Are you my mother? My daughter? My wife, my cousin, my niece. I, I know you. I sure I do know you. 
You hateful, hideous woman. Why are you still with me? Why? Go away! Go away! Don't look at her. Turn your eyes and keep them wide open on me. Look, Hope, I'm Marie. Remember who you are. I'm here. M Marie. And if you don't remember, gaze at me and learn again that I am Marie. Look at my hair, my eyes, my face, and my arms. Learn me off of your heart. You're upsetting him. He's past <laughs> learning anything new now. And if I can't hold you back, at least turn and look at me. Take this picture of me with you as you go. He could never drag that around. He hasn't got the strength. It's too heavy for a ghost. He's got to travel light. Throw everything away. Lighten the load. It's time to get rid of the Belost, Your Majesty. Lighten your load. Marie? You see, your name means nothing to him now. Marie's name now means nothing to the king. Marie? He said it. Repeated it, but without understanding. Like a parrot. Sounds that are dead. He'll start his journey with a picture of me in his mind. That won't get in his way. It's a, a device fitted with a gadget that works by remote control. Have another look. He can't see you! He won't see you anymore. <laughs> no! <laughs> he can't see you anymore. His majesty is officially blind. That's true, he's gone blind. He can hear. He's trying to listen. He's stretching out one arm and then the other. What's he trying to grab hold of? He wants something to lean on. Where are the walls? Where are the doors? Where are the windows? Here's an arm for you, Your Majesty. The walls are here. We are all here. Oh, the walls is here. Guard, where are you? Insert me. Still yours to command, Your Majesty. <laughs> yes, still yours to command. Yes, yes, I'm here. Your yes. apartments are this way, I'm Your here. Majesty. I swear. We will never leave, Your Majesty. We're here beside you. We'll stay with you. Guard! Juliet, where are you? I can't hear you anymore. Answer me! Doctor! Doctor! Am I going deaf? No, not yet. Doctor? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really must go. Uh, I'm really sorry. Please look. Forgive me, I'm sorry. No. No. Oh, his voice is getting faint. The sound of his footstep is fading away. He's gone. He's a doctor with professional obligations. Where are, where are the others? They were They've gone and they shut me in. All those people, they were hanging in your way getting under your feet, admit they got on your nerves. I need their service. I'll take their places. I'm the queen of all trades. I never gave anyone permission to go. Make them come back. They've been cut off. It's what you wanted. It's not what I wanted! They can't come back now. You can't go back on your decision. You've dropped them. Call them! You've forgotten their names. Who? What were they called? How many were there? Who do you mean? I don't like being shut in. Open the doors. A little patience. The doors will soon be open wide. The doors. The doors. Were they once the world? What doors? Was they once the world? Were you ever even alive? I am. Keep still. Moving tires. I am. Sounds. Echoes coming from a great distance, fainter and fainter. I am deaf. You can still hear me. Sometimes you have a dream, and you get involved in it. You believe it, you love it. In the morning when you open your eyes, the two worlds are still confused. The brilliance of the light blurs the faces of the night. You'd like to remember. You'd like to hold them back, but they slip between your fingers. The brutal reality of the day drives them away. What did I dream about, you ask yourself? What was it that happened? Who was I kissing? Who did I love? What was I saying and what was I told? 
Then you find you're left with a vague regret of all the things that were or seemed to have been. You no longer know what it was that was there all around you. You no longer know. I no longer know what was there all around me. I know it was part of a world. And this world was about me. It was me. What else was there? What else? There are still some cords that bind you which I haven't yet untied or which I haven't cut. There are still some hands that cling to you and hold you back. Me. 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 This is not the real you. It's an odd collection of bits and pieces, horrid things that live on you like parasites. The mistletoe that grows on the bough is not the bough, the ivy that climbs the wall is not the wall. You're sagging under the load. Your shoulders are bent. That's what makes you feel so old. And it's that ball and chain dragging at your feet, which makes it so difficult to walk. A ton. It must weigh at least a ton. That's better. How have you managed to trail them around all your life? And I used to wonder why you were so round-shouldered. It's because of that sack and that pack and those spare pair of army boots. No! Don't get excited. You don't need an extra pair of boots anymore, or that rifle or that machine gun, or that toolbox. She seems quite attached to it, a nasty, rusty old saber. Leave it all to me and be a good boy. You don't need self-defense anymore. No one wants to hurt you now. All those thorns and splinters on your cloak, those creepers and seaweed and slimy wet leaves, how they stick to you, I'll pick them off. I'll pull them away. What dirty marks they've made. Dreamer comes out of his dream. There you are. Now I've got rid of all of the messy little things that worried you. Your cloak is more beautiful now. We've cleaned you up. Have a little walk. Give me your hand. Give me your hands then. Don't be afraid. Let yourself go. I'll see you. Don't fall. You don't dare. He imagines he's he thinks his existence is all existence. I'll have to drive that out of him. Nothing will be forgotten. It's all safe in a mind that needs no memories. A grain of salt dissolved in water doesn't disappear. It makes the water salty. That's it, straight up. Now you're not so round-shouldered. You've no more pains in your back, no more stiffness. Wasn't that a heavy load to bear? Now you feel better. You can go forward now. Go on. Don't punch your shoulders. You've no more load to bear. All those conditioned reflexes so hard to shake off. You've no more weight on your shoulders. I tell you, stand up straight. Your hand. How disobedient he is. Don't clench your fists like that. Open your fingers up. What are you holding? He's holding his whole kingdom in his hand. In miniature. On microfilm. In tiny grains. The grain won't grow again. It's bad seed moldy. Drop them. Unclasp your fingers. I order you to loosen those fingers. Let go of the plains. Let go of the mountains like this. They were only dust. Come along. Still trying to resist. Where does he find all this willpower? No, don't try to lie down. Don't sit down either. No reason why you should stumble. I'll guide you. Don't be frightened. You can do it now, can't you? It's easy, isn't it? I've had a gentle slope made for you. It gets steeper later on, but that doesn't matter now. You'll have your strength back by then. Don't turn your head to see what you'll never see again. Think hard. Concentrate on your heart and keep right on. You must. This empire, has there ever been another empire like it? With two suns, two moons, two heavens to light it. And there is a sun rising. And there's another, a third firmament, shooting up and fading out. As one sun set, others are rising. Dawn and twilight all at once, beyond the 777 poles. Go farther, 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 toggle on, toggle on, go on! Blue, blue. You can still distinguish colors, give up this empire too, and give your colors up. They're leading you astray, holding you up. You 
You can't linger any longer. You can't stop again. You mustn't. Don't be frightened. Walk by yourself. It's the day now or the night. There's no more day and no more night. Try and follow the wheel that's spinning round in front of you. Don't lose sight of it. Follow it, but not too close. It's all in flames. You might get burnt. I'll move the undergrowth aside. Beware. Don't bump into the phantom on your right. Clutching hands, imploring hands, pinnacle arms and hands. Don't you come back. Away with you. Don't touch him or I'll strike you. Don't turn your head. Skirt the precipice to your left, and don't be afraid of the howling wolf. His fangs are only cardboard. He doesn't exist. Wolf, cease to exist. Don't be afraid of the rats now either. They can't bite your toes anymore. Rats and vipers cease to exist! Don't start pitying the beggar holding out his hand. Beware of the old woman coming towards you. Don't take the glass of water. She's offering you not thirsty. He's no need to quench his thirst, old woman. Vanish! Climb over the fence. Now you've lost the power of speech. There's no more need for your heart to beat. No more need to breathe. It was a lot of fuss over nothing, wasn't it? Now you can take your place. 